Hi, Eric with Rock and H Farm Toys. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble one of my single combine trailer kits. This is what started all of Rock and H Farm Toys, is my interest in custom harvesting crews and all the machines that go in there. And uh, I built these out of necessity because I didn't know where to buy them and I wanted so many of them that uh, I wanted to reduce my cost. So now I'm passing that on to you who uh, might want to build your own custom piece as either a gift or to uh, do like I did and reduce your cost in this in this part of the hobby. So uh, we'll start by showing you what you'll get in the kit. In the Rocket H Farm Toy Combine Trailer Kit, this is what you're going to receive as uh, when you make a purchase. You'll receive two pieces of mild steel for the gooseneck. You'll receive a flat piece of bar to complete the gooseneck and to make your hitch. You'll receive two pieces of 4 inch rectangular tubing. It's 3 sixteenths by 3 thirty seconds if you're wondering. You'll receive two pieces of 4 and a quarter inch square tubing that's also 3 thirty seconds in uh, measurement. You'll receive two pieces of or a piece of rectangular tubing and a piece of square tubing for the front and the back, and they're two and an eighth inch long. A hitch for the back. Two pieces that will go around the axles, which I'll show you how that is connected later. And then you'll get 14 pieces of square tubing that are about an inch or are almost seven eighths inch long. Also, you receive a nail or part of a piece of nail for your hitch. This I found fits perfectly in DCP trucks. So uh, that uh, is a nice feature about these trailers in this kit. After you kind of unpack your kit, uh, here's some things you're going to want to buy. And, and like I said at the beginning of this video, this is how I got started in this. And this is, this is no frills you'll have lots of these things around your house uh, uh, to complete this kit the way I've been doing it for quite a long time so uh, you want to buy a box of hex nuts these the size is 8-32 hex nuts they're nothing fancy but uh, this is what I've been using for spacers and it, they work well uh, the only recommendation I have for you is do double check the size because they can be inconsistent in the, po in the pack um, if you don't have a soldering iron, this is a basic soldering iron that I've been using. It's nothing fancy. Bought it at a hardware store. This is a Weller SP40L. Uh, and you can use the tip of your choice. Also on the parts list, I almost forgot, you'll also receive two sets of uh, axles. Um, going back to other supplies, I'm not going to show you how to solder. There's other videos on YouTube that will show you how to do that. But I'm using paste flux and a liquid flux interchangeably. It depends on my mood and, and it just I just have no rhyme or reason as to which one I use. Here's another tip about soldering. I, uh, for a long time, did not use small diameter uh, solder. What a mistake. Uh, for a long time I've been fighting, um, well I've been using just a larger diameter from the hardware store and I was always filing and uh, removing lots of excess uh, solder that, you know, I'd tell you, all I can say is use this smaller diameter flux. I bought this at Radio Shack and it's for electronic purposes and this is a lifesaver and it'll save you tons and tons of time. And um, if you don't have a ruler I recommend that you get one. You'll notice here on my workbench, this is where I this is where I've made dozens and dozens of these combine trailers. Here at my kitchen table, I'm just using a piece of steel on a on a piece of wood covered in masonite or uh, formica. And then I'm using magnets to hold things and and this is really uh, all I use. Um, you will want um, a set of small files if you don't have them already. Uh, that I would recommend you get some of those. So now I'll show you how to begin assembling your combine trailer.
This is how I basically assembled the trailer before I solder. You'll notice these are the pieces of square tubing that are four and a quarter inch long. This is your rectangular tubing which is four inches long and then your two pieces front and back of rectangular and square tubing that are two and an eighth inches long. Of course down the middle you have all your approximately seven eighths inch pieces of square tubing. I start assembling at the back to the front and you're going to have a little bit of wiggle room in here depending on if these nuts are all consistent. As mentioned before, do check the pack and make sure that you have uh, consistent pieces. I'm using a piece of inch and three sixteenths aluminum for my spacer on the back. In the past I used just a series of nuts and bolts out of my bin in my garage which you, know, you can do too if that uh, moves you or you can even piece of, use a piece of wood to make that space. It works very well uh, to have a piece of aluminum or something better than the nuts and bolts which I was using before. After I get these, this put in and all that squared up, I'll go ahead and put the small pieces of square tubing and alternate the nuts and the tube all the way down this gap like I mentioned here will either be narrower or shorter depending on how consistent these parts come out for you so when you begin final assembly or final, final soldering of these cross members I recommend finding some sort of spacer to fill in this gap and keep all of these tight so, you, so it all comes out square So what I'll do now is I'll, I'm going to solder this, um, not, like I mentioned I'm not going to teach you how to solder it, but I'm going to solder this so you can kind of see how the final product looks uh, when we're, or at least this much of it is finished. As you can see here I went ahead and soldered my corners and I also soldered the front and the back. Uh, it's easier if you can uh, get your soldering iron in here at an angle that works a lot better than just soldering the front so what I'll normally do is once I get everything kind of put together I'll tack the front or the middle frame rails to the front and the back and then I'll come in and remove all these things these pieces here like you see leaving a few of these other parts in here just to make sure everything stays square and nice and pretty and then I will go ahead and come in here and solder it up firm. I begin moving from the back to the front like I showed you before. There. Again making sure that all the flat spots are touching the brass. There we go. That's that. For spacers on this part of it, you can use some of the leftover nuts and bolts that you've got around the house or whatever spacer trips your trigger. I don't get too carried away with all of this. Uh, I want to get it as tight as I can without getting tight. And the other side is a bit loose. Again, not the end of the world, just means that uh, it's not perfectly square. So I'm going to go ahead and begin soldering. Uh, today I'm choosing to use my uh, paste or my liquid flux. And you'll notice my workbench isn't my piece of steel here isn't perfectly flat, so it. Uh, so I'm going to move this to a slightly better spot. And I'm not going to use a magnet to hold this down as uh, my nuts and bolts will want to go with it. So what I'm going to do is just use my soldering iron and, and my hands to kind of make that happen for the time being. I have all of these cross members 
tacked in there on the edges. You notice my soldering job isn't real pretty, so hopefully you guys are better at soldering than I am. What I'm going to do now that I have these tacked is I'm going to come in and do the inside. Now I'm finished soldering. As you can see, all the joints are are soldered together real nicely. I got penetration of the uh, solder clear down the joint and I went back and I reheated a few of these just to clean them up make them look a little better. I'm not without a little bit of filing but thanks to this smaller solder I'm down to just uh, a few minutes and with the power tool that I'll use this will come. I'll shave that off real fast and then these joints I probably won't even touch these because they're just nice and clean and neat and uh, and I might take a small file in on a few of them if there's uh, something sticking up. That's just my preference. And then, of course, I'll take a file and knock that all off, as well as the back. Now we're ready to assemble the interior pieces here that will uh, be some support for uh, your rear tires. Again, I'll just reuse some of these other parts that I've already, uh, nuts that I've already been using and it looks like this is just a hair long so I'll take that to my file and just clean that up trim it down a little bit. A real scientific way for holding these parts in as you can tell I just kind of use whatever's at hand and we'll put a little flux there and there these pieces uh, that will be on the outsides of your wheels are completed are soldered in this is how it looks as a finished product it gives your combines rear tire something to uh, ride on as uh, you have it on your shelf or going down the road so to speak it's time to assemble your gooseneck hitch now these are laser cut out of mild steel you can solder mild steel to brass I've been doing that and uh, successfully for a while the only caveat to that is you do want to take a file and rough up the bottoms on both sides and the solder just sticks to it a lot better to mount that you want to make sure you have a clean surface and uh, this is going to be adequate. You'll notice uh, the, the bottom end of this is a quarter inch and this is three sixteenths. Mount your gooseneck hitch to the front of your piece of rectangular tubing. If you're using DCP trucks, which is what I made these to fit, if you're using DCP trucks, um, Peterbilt's and Kenworth's will, will be able to turn. I didn't leave a lot of room in here uh, because I wanted it to look like the real thing. So to make sure that your DCPs will fit and, and look right and turn right the way you want them to, mount this gooseneck towards the front. You're going to have a little bit of overhang right here, but uh, shouldn't it won't be a problem for you. I did not show you how to assemble this. Um, it it uh, is quite a trick, but basically what I do is I'll, on this particular board, I'll go ahead and uh, let this hang over the edge a little bit, like so. And then you can use magnets or, or if you're using a piece of wood, whatever, to hold it in place. And then uh, make sure it's square and then solder that in, just like so. Now to make sure that this is level. This is where your spare change uh, bottle or ashtray or whatever it happens you happen to keep your uh, spare change in. I'll just stack nickels, quarters and dimes or whatever, nuts and bolts until this is level. And then I'll just uh, you know use some magnets or different things to hold it in place and then solder it. Nothing to it. Okay, you can see that I've used some magnets, some assorted parts here to get my gooseneck level. 
and now I'm ready to solder. The gooseneck is now soldered in place and I did such a fabulous job that uh, the solder did exactly what it should do and it uh, I soldered it on the inside here and on the inside here and then the solder came actually through the other side which uh, is exactly what it's supposed to do if you have uh, your metal clean and you're using the right kind of a flux at this point you can drill your hole here for your gooseneck just measure the middle diameter put a so hole three thirty seconds inch in diameter put a hole toward the front and then you may need to ream that out with a round file if, if your piece of uh, solid stock doesn't doesn't uh, fit quite smoothly then you'll do just like we did to assemble the gooseneck use your nuts and bolts to uh, set your depth for your piece of stock and then solder it in place now you might have some sticking out the top and the bottom which isn't a big problem you can come in here with a heavy side cutter or a dremel with a abrasive bit and cut that off flush and then you can also come in here with a file and then sand this part smooth. Now I'm not going to give you any hard and fast rule on how long that needs to be but I'll tell you it doesn't have to be terribly long and I'll show you an example. This is one I did this spring for myself and you can see that it's not very long maybe just over an eighth of an inch long and then I filed it flat and this like I said will fit a DCP truck perfectly at this point you can go ahead and put your hitch on and like I've been doing all this time I've been using other things for uh, available parts for spacers and just keep on doing that because it works Use your magnets to hold it. I started out with a 16 inch hole there, which isn't big enough. If you're going to use um, like a trailer dolly so you can pull a, a grain trailer behind it, or many of the different ty styles of header trailers you can pull behind it, that hole you can kind of you'll have to base that off whatever it is you're going to be pulling because uh, it seems like they're all different sizes so I usually go a little bit bigger uh, than what I actually need just so I don't have to mess around with with trailer dollies or header trailers not fitting correctly some optional things you can do with your combine trailer from Rock and H Farm Toys in the past I have went to the painstaking trouble and this is when I used to have these powder coated um, I would go ahead and cut tiny pieces of brass and I'd put one in here up and up uh, you know about every other one I usually put in three depending on what size of trailer I was, I was doing and I'd solder those in and I'm telling you friends if you've got some small styrene just glue some small styrene in here um, that will do the equivalent job and it'll make it look like you've like the real ones you can see on these for myself I didn't even bother with that also I've, in the past I've also put in cross members inside here usually two and again to solder those tiny pieces in and do that well is it's just I didn't do it because I didn't want to go through the work on my own stuff um, but you can do that for yourself and again using a variety of nuts and bolts for spacers you can put your little cross members in here uh, fairly easily if you're just going to use a rattle can to put paint on these I'd recommend you just use some small styrene stick it in there and glue it in and that's basically it as for axle spacings I don't even want to show you what I do here because uh, it's such a disaster and um, I haven't come up with a better way because uh, my measuring skills aren't very great so what I normally do is 
measure in a little bit, measure in on both sides here, and then I'll, and this is all together by this time. So I drill my, this is the last thing I do is drill my axle holes, and I come in with a drill bit at an angle and drill them in on both sides. And that's what I do. Now, you can actually put your axle holes in if you're a better machinist or a better, uh, if you're a better craftsman than I am. Ideally, I think it'd be best if you put your axle holes in before you did all the assembly, but to make sure that those holes were parallel and perfect would, uh, that's just never worked for me so far. So, that's how you install and that's how you uh, assemble a Rockin' H trailer. Well friends, I appreciate you watching. This concludes this do-it-yourself video from Rockin' H Farm Toys on how to assemble a single combine trailer. One thing I didn't mention at the beginning of this video, and this might be something for advanced users, if you happen to be using Case IH 7088 uh, 164 scale combines on your layout or your harvest crew, you can actually shorten these outside pieces up to 3 and 7 eighths inches long. What I found was the, seven, the 7088 feeder house will go up high enough to go over the truck you're attaching your trailer to. Not all the other combines do that. The Gleaner A series gets close uh, and none of the others uh, do that at all. Now this trick will only work if you have a combine with a feeder house that will raise pretty high up in the air and I've only found the 7088 to have that feature. And uh, one other thing on these as well, if you're using a John Deere uh, S690 model combine um, and you want the feeder house to go in between your gooseneck, this isn't wide enough. Uh, if you know that that's the kind of combine you're going to be pulling on your trailer, you'll want to get a wider piece of brass and you can let me know when you order uh, what you're looking for on that. This particular trailer is fairly universal. You can put any combine on there that you pretty much like, uh, especially ones with a fixed feeder house from Ertl or some of the other manufacturers. They have a fixed feeder house. You definitely want to make this style of trailer. This one, uh, which is shorter, you want to use for the 7088 or like combines that have a feeder house that, of course, raise high up in the air. So, that concludes this uh, do it yourself video. Love to hear your feedback, and I want to see your projects. Please post pictures at our Facebook page at Rockin' H Farm Toys on Facebook. Uh, that way I can see uh, and you can share your work with the world. I appreciate you watching and thank you for uh, being a part of a Rockin' H video.